In this video I'm going to talk about Land Cruiser 70 series and the rear track issue. The rear axle is narrower than the front axle. Does this affect the handling? Without a question. But is it a big deal? Is it an off-road issue only? Or does it affect handling on-road? I'm going to answer all of those questions now and also talk about solutions to the problem. The Land Cruiser 70 is only sold in some parts of Africa, some parts of Asia and Australia. This piece from here to here was developed in 1985. They haven't changed it. They've only changed the front and they changed the front to fit this engine, the V8 engine. They needed to make the front wider to fit the engine. So they redesigned it. I think it's fantastic. But there's one thing they forgot about. They forgot to widen the back axle. So now you have a vehicle with a front axle that is considerably wider than the back. Is it a real problem or just a perceived one? All right, so my own experience is that with the Land Cruiser 76, it can be a bit of a problem. I noticed it a little bit when I had one of those vehicles and drove it in Botswana. 79 series and 2015 in Namibia. It was horrible to drive in sand. Uh, this particular vehicle, mechanic stock, I must admit, I didn't notice it. I didn't, if there was a problem, it was not obvious to me. So you're probably thinking, well, should I invest the money? And what alternatives are there? Are there alternatives to spending some money and doing it properly, which is the way I'm doing it now, or finding a shortcut and spending far less money and maybe you won't get quite the results, but what result will you get? Let's talk about that. Here, the multi-drive true track has been fitted. <clears throat> and what it's basically done, it has moved the center of the, the point where the bearings sit and moved it out, ex expanding the overall width of the rear axle by 110 millimeters, 55 each side. The other way of doing it is with a wheel rim that has a different offset. Now in Australia, an offset more than 25 millimeters over the bearing. You must remember that the wheel should run over the center of the bearing. The moment it is offset, it will cause more wear on the one side of the bearing than the other. Anything over 25 millimeters is illegal in Australia. We'll talk about the ramifications of that in the illegality of putting wider rims on the back later. <clears throat> the alternative, of course, are spacers. Just put a spacer, but that doesn't move the bearing. That is why spacers are illegal and even offset rims. If they're over the 25 millimeter correction, they're illegal too. Why is that important? It's important because if you have an accident and you have modified your vehicle illegally, the ramifications are that if the accident was deemed to be your fault, you will have no public liability insurance. And whatever damage you cause will be for your pocket because you've broken the law. You were driving an illegal vehicle. Okay, now think about the ramifications of that. But let's take away that. What about your own personal safety? Now again, it's a thing of, well, is this modification absolutely necessary with the 70 series Land Cruiser? It's not as if Toyota is producing an unsafe vehicle. It has passed relevant safety tests. So again, it's a question of, if I change it, do I need to? And do I need to do it? And is it worth doing it properly? Because, of course, properly costs more. Another consideration is this. <clears throat> the true track actually moves everything out. If you just move the wheel out by spaces or an offset, the disc rotor and the drum brake are exposed to rocks and whatever might hit them. They're not protected inside the wheel rim. They're exposed to the airstream and they're going to get damaged. My vehicle will be jacked up and prepared for the modification. I'm in a town called Geelong, near Melbourne, in Victoria. 
This is where I'm having the modification done. I've come here to a company called Multidrive. They're part of Kinetic in, in, uh, Engineering. And Multidrive uh, do a lot of things uh, with vehicles, uh, commercial applications um, with specialty vehicles, uh, Hilux and Land Cruiser 70 series. And one of the modifications that they have, that they do regularly to these vehicles, is widening the rear axle and I explain why this is a modification that is very desirable for 70 series land cruisers. It's possible at the end of this video you will still be do I really need it? Must I spend the money? Must I do this? And that's your decision based on how you use your vehicle. You may find the standard vehicle as it is perfectly acceptable, doesn't worry you, performs perfectly well and most 79 Land Cruiser owners will feel that way. But I, I do think that those that tow with a 79 will see a massive difference in stability. I believe that to be true because the, the true tracker will improve stability. This isn't an off-road solution. This is a stability solution that will be felt, I believe, both on-road and off-road. And up to this point, I thought it was just an off-road issue. I'm not so sure. So once this job is done and I take the vehicle out, I'll give a full report. The modification is started by stripping each hub and then cutting off the stub axles. Simply put, the stub axle is cut off and this replaces it. So that's where the old stub axle would have been and there's the spacer there and now the bearings now sit here and here replicating Toyota's original design. These stub axles begin their lives looking like this. This is the kit when supplied they build everything here, they engineer everything here, manufacture it here, and ship it out to other companies to fit to Land Cruisers. And this is what the kit looks like. It basically consists of a, a half shaft, that's the half shaft, and you can see there the hub axle, that is the extension. Okay, that is a replica of Toyota's own, it's exactly the same as Toyota's own hub shaft. This is the shorter axle, the other side of the differential. And it comes also with extension, brake hose extensions and other bits and pieces. Some of you might be thinking, watching that happen, is that what about all of the muck, the result of all of the cutting and grinding? What happens if it gets into the differential? Well, they've thought of that as well. These are plugs that you put into the axle to prevent all the muck from all the work contaminating the oil. They thought of everything. The two different sizes, this is for the Australian specification rear disc brake and this is for the specification in Africa and Asia where the rear brakes are drums. Because the 76 series Land Cruiser station wagon has a weaker rear axle, this modification, as seen here, doesn't work. Multidrive also offers an entire axle replacement. The axle is then reassembled with brand new drive shafts. I then drove the Land Cruiser across Australia over all kinds of terrains covering over 7,500 kilometers. Here are my findings. My job now is to put the wheel track issue in perspective. Um, did I notice a difference? Uh, yes, immediately. The most striking thing actually happened within 10 minutes of me leaving Geelong, getting on the highway. 
I noticed immediately that I was doing less correction. You know, when you drive these vehicles, you don't actually notice it. You, in fact, you get used to it so quickly that you just tend to correct and, and enjoy the vehicle. Having the axle widened, I suddenly found myself actually driving faster. The vehicle was more stable. There was something about the handling of the vehicle that I noticed absolutely immediately. It was the first thing. But now, let's, let's, I have to rewind now. Because I'm saying, wow, it's a big change, a big change. No, it's a subtle change, but it's a change. It, there's no question about it, that it feels better. I feel on the long road, on the long stretches, I tend to want to drive faster because somehow the vehicle is more, I'm doing less correcting. It just feels better. Did I notice a difference on the sand tracks? No. I didn't. I've never found the troop carrier having a problem. But I asked people about it when I started talking to people about the modification that I had made. And people were saying that these are, these are people working on mines and, and agricultural uses. They don't like the 78 troop carriers or 79s for towing. They don't like them. They said that the old 75 troop carriers are much nicer for towing. The old 75 was the model previous to the widening of the front axle. And they say it's just nicer to tow. It's just, it's just more comfortable to tow. So my conclusion is, if you're a 70 series owner and you know about the issue, does it worry you? Does it really worry you? Because if not, if not then I would say, well, why are, you, why are you going to change it? If you are towing, and it doesn't worry you, but it is a little concern in the back of your mind. And then sometimes you feel that maybe the vehicle isn't as stable as it, because this is quite a common complaint I hear about 79, particularly the long wheelbase 79s, people that drive them. And I noticed with the 79 is definitely worse than the 78 and the 76 in terms of traveling in sand and the, the swaying effect that you get from the handling. If you're towing with a 79, even on tarmac, forget about it. This is not an off-road issue. This is a handling issue in all terrains. Is it noticeable more off-road than on-road? Maybe not, is my conclusion. It, I noticed it on-road with this more than I noticed it off-road. With a 79, I think it, the same would be the case. And I believe that if you're towing, with any of these Land Cruisers, you should seriously think about sorting that out. Because I believe that if there is a stability issue with this vehicle and the narrow rear axle, it is going to be exaggerated fivefold, tenfold, if you are towing. Firstly, if you're heavily laden. Secondly, if you're towing. So if it's not really bothering you, then I, I would just say, well, you know, if it's kind of bothering you, but you really don't want to spend the money, then I would say the first option is to fit a wider, a different offset at the back than the front. Your spare wheel must be suitable for the front wheels. In other words, that's a zero offset. So if you need to change a back, you just have an offset correction at the back for a period while you swap over the tire. No big deal. So you don't have to worry about carrying different spares. That's not really an, an issue. But make sure the offset is not more than 25 millimeters, otherwise it becomes illegal. That I believe will go quite on that. 25 is about halfway to what you want. You actually want about 50 each side. So that's going to make a difference. How much of a difference? I don't know, but it is going to make a difference. Spacers, forget it. Forget spacers. A, they're dangerous. B, they can come loose and you don't know about it because it's actually connect, bolted on with separate bolts. So they can actually come loose and to tighten them, you actually got to take off the rim and you... Spacers are an A, they're illegal. B, no, don't do it with spacers. Okay, they're dangerous things. And they wear the bearings extremely quickly. If you go out 50 millimeters with a spacer, well, if you've done that, I have, I have a bit more advice to give here. If you've done that with spacers, change your wheel bearings every 20,000 kilometers, especially if you're loaded. If you're towing 
and you've got spaces, change your rear wheel bearings with every service. It's that serious. The accelerated wear on a heavily laden vehicle that has an offset of 50 millimeters is extreme. And uh, it's not that uncommon for Land Cruisers to run bearings that have had spacer modifications. Actually quite, quite a common thing, particularly again with those people that are towing. But if you're happy with your vehicle and you're not too fussy about its handling and you're quite happy with the way it handles off-road and off-road tracks, I would probably leave it as it is. The alternative, which costs in the region of double what the True Track costs, is a replacement axle, not necessarily from True Track, but from other manufacturers. Those are very heavy duty axles. And if you want to go that far, spend that amount of money, then you're also getting a, a very, very much higher grade axle than the standard axle. But to me, for my purposes, a full upgrade axle is complete and utter overkill. I don't want to do that. I'm not, my vehicle is not designed and not used for competition and, and ultimate extreme off-road driving. That's not what I do and that's not what I want to do. And those axles are better suited to that application than my application. I hope this has brought some light into the subject of the <laughs> the, the rear axle issue on Land Cruiser 79s. I'm grateful that I did it. Would I do it now again? Yeah, I, I would. I would, and I'm glad I've done it. Thank you for watching.